ready. All right. I want to welcome everybody to Ron Watson's Astrology. And uh, we're going to be doing um, one of many classes that we've been conducting over the last month or two. And um, we have uh, Jared online. And um, he's an um, uh, avid student and uh, very bright. And we're going to enjoy his inputs as well. He's also a computer genius. We are very blessed to have his input on that area. Um, so this is Jared, and uh, we want to welcome him. And we also have Vanita online here. And Vanita, say something, and your picture will show. Uh, hello. How are you guys doing? There she is. Beautiful Vanita. Now we're going to have also Destiny online. And Destiny is a longtime student. You have to say something, Destiny, to get your picture up. Hello. Nice to see you all. There we go. So we've got um, some very good students online here. And um, Jared is uh, becoming a very, very astute astrology student. So today, what do we want to do is cover a lot of the basics, which um, I sometimes go to college before I go to kindergarten, you know. So I recognize that I tend to get into uh, some of the more advanced uh, areas of astrology and not the primary basic ones. But we're going to try to cover some of that today. And we're going to do it a little bit with questions. Uh, I want to uh, see just how much we can milk out of Jared here and see how much he feels he's capable of covering the answers for me. And some of the things I'll ask him, it doesn't matter if you don't have the answer. That's what we're here for. One of the things I want to say to you as a, as a teacher, um, and that is that when a student asks a question that I don't have the answer for, um, I'm not embarrassed by that. I just say, look, I don't know the answer, but I'll get it and I'll make sure I know it next time, or I'll get it back to you over the next day or two. The questions are okay. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, so there's no reason to be embarrassed by not knowing something. Um, the questions are basically um, kind of a, a tool to see where you're at, engage where you're at, so I know how to proceed with your teachings and making sure that you're doing the homework you need to do. So we'll start out with just some true or false questions. Um, is astrology areas, uh, in astrology areas of life, um, um, affected are best represented by signs and planets. In astrology, areas of life, my wife typed that out, that's out, that's good, okay. Um, signs uh, depict the person's energy. Is this true or false? Let me start with the first one. Is this in astrology areas of the affected are best represented by signs and by planets? Yes or no? Would you say? Uh, I would say false. Um, they're best represented by the houses. Okay. Okay. In areas of life, that's a good answer, actually. Uh, the areas of life are the houses. And uh, <clears throat> if we take the fourth house, it represents the home area of your life. In early childhood, uh, second house represents money. And so we're going to keep going. So, okay, do signs depict the person's energy? Signs depict the person's energy. I would say false that the planets depict the, uh, the energy. Very, very good answer. Yeah. It's going to be hard to, be hard to stump them there. Um, <laughs> okay. Attitudes almost always highlight the planets. Attitudes almost always highlight the planets. That might not be too clear. Um, what do you think most depicts the attitude of these influences? I would say the signs. The signs mostly depict the attitude. 
You're right, actually. It's perfect. Um, you actually gave me the right answer, uh, and that is the signs. So what is the Ascendant about? The Ascendant is about um, the way that you appear. It's, it's really closely connected to me from, you know, when Aries in the first house, just like the way that you appear to others and kind of like your ego and, you know, the um, essentials of your spirit or who you are. Um, that appear to others. It's basically, it is your persona, the way you appear. Um, and you were right in that. Um, what is the rising sign? Is it different from the ascendant? The rising sign is um, is basically opposite of the ascendant, right? That is um, the planet that's on the opposite side of the ascendant. So um, you would like to know what does it what does it mean or what does it represent? I guess. The, uh, the way that you'd like to be seen, right? Uh, maybe, um, how else to describe? Um, I think, yeah, mostly for me, from what I understand so far, it's the way that you prefer to be seen or, you know, the things that you'd like to kind of improve upon or like maybe an area of weakness, like the opposite of the ascendant. So if the ascendant is how you appear to, to others that, um, then the rising sign would be uh, the way you'd like to appear to others or the way, you know, things that you kind of are kind of weak in that area and would like to, you know, strengthen. Okay. We'll get back to that later. Um, it was not a correct answer. Okay. That's okay, though. Okay. Um, So the other question was, okay, name the cardinal signs, the fixed signs, and the mutable signs. Okay, so the cardinal signs would be Cancer, I'm sorry, let's start from the beginning. So Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Very, very good, okay. And uh, what are the fixed signs? Fixed signs would be um, Taurus, um, Taurus, Leo, uh, Scorpio, and uh, Sagittarius. That one was wrong. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other, oh, Scorpio and um, uh, Aquarius. No? Yes, you got it. You got it. Okay, so the four fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. Now, why is it important to know whether they're fixed, cardinal, or mutable? But next, before I ask you that question, what are the four mutable signs? Uh, the four mutable signs would be, um, let's see, so... I've got uh, Gemini, uh, Virgo, uh, <clears throat> Sagittarius, and uh, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and uh, Pis Pisces. You did it. Yeah, you answered them. So why do you think it's important to know whether it's in a fixed, a mutable, or a cardinal sign? When we talk about these, we're talking about the quadruplicities. We're talking about signs that are in opposition or square to each other. That's right. why they're called the quadruplicities, because there's four interacting signs. And the mutable gives you a certain, if you have a preponderance of planets and mutable signs, it gives you a message. If you have a preponderance of planets and fixed signs, that also has its meaning and significance. If you have a preponderance of cardinal signs, it's very, very much in, important to know that because it'll give you another signal of where that person's life 
is directed and what's happening in it. So if I ask you, what do you think the fixed signs are? What is the main characteristic of the fixed signs? What would you answer me? It's more like an earthly sign. So that means it's really down to earth. Also, it's not uh, really, um, it's not easy to change. They're kind of set in, set in their way, this, you know, in this way, if it's a fixed sign, I would say. Okay, that's very good. So then it could be stubbornness, right? Stubbornness, yes. Uh -huh. But if it's perseverance, it's not stubborn, is it? Right. <laughs> so this quality that we call stubborn can be a beneficial thing if it's directed into perseverance and hanging in there. It's the kind of signs that don't want to break up in a relationship. If you have proponents to take signs, you tend to not want to break out of a relationship. You tend to want to stay in it, no matter how un uncomfortable it is. So the fixed signs will do that. Now, is it just all the planets being in the fixed signs? Or is it one or two? It might be one or two. It might be Venus in a fixed sign, which means the relationships are, there tends to be uh, commitments and uh, holding on to a relationship long before it should have ended. You see where I'm going? Yes. So th this knowledge is important when you get into fixed, mutable, and cardinal. Okay. So... <clears throat> and I also want to say that the quality of fixed is very often very uh, loyal. Loyalty is something that can be a two-edged sword because if you're in a very bad relationship and you're loyal and you don't want to break out, that's not necessarily something good except it's something that needs to be worked on. You need to understand when to let go. I often tell my clients, especially in relationships, you either die in together or you're living together. And think about that. And I know a lot of people in my years and years and thousands of charts that are dying together and they won't let go, even if it kills them. You know, so I'm, I'm not letting go of this relationship. You see that in the 90 day um, show, <laughs> you know, I, I see them fighting for a relationship when it's over. And I sometimes watch it and I say, wow, I wish I could counsel her, you know, please let go. It's not worth it. As soon as you find somebody else of interest, that person is going to be coming, flying back, begging you to, to stay in the relationship because you're so too attached. You can be too attached to a relationship. Okay. Destiny can tell you about that. Forgive I can't. <laughs> You've been there, done that, right? <laughs> a time or two. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm digressing a little bit from what my wife wants me to do, but and I need to I need to explain things. I can't just jump on. Okay, each sign rules a certain part of the human body. Um, uh, so point, um, okay, the head, the throat, the hands, the arms. Okay, I want you to tell me what part of the body Aries rules. That's definitely the head. Uh, yeah, the, the head. Good, good right answer. How about Taurus? Taurus is the neck and the throat. Good for you. Gemini. Hands and feet. Nope. No. Um, oh, the lungs. Good. Okay. okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you with this. And Elena didn't want me to do this. She wants me to come back to it later. But I feel better to let you because I know you know it basically. It's the hands, the arms, and the lungs. Okay, all of that's involved. Okay. Hands, arms, and lungs. Yeah. So if you have a person that has a lot of afflicted planets in Gemini. The one thing, especially if Mars is there or Saturn, you want to make sure they don't smoke. Okay. Because they tend to have problems in those areas. That's why it's important to know the part of the body. Right. So cancer rules what? The breast. Good. What else? Um, I would say the chest and the breast and the stomach, right? Yeah, not the breast. Yeah, the breast, you're right. The breast, the stomach. 
Very good. Good answer. Okay. Okay. So Leo rules what? The back. What else? Uh, the, the hips are like the lower back and, uh, you know, um, I, I thought it was just lower back and kind of the top of the hip area. Uh, that's, that. No, that's not true, but that's okay. So it's um, Leo rules the back. You're right, um, and not necessarily the lower back. That gets into a little bit more of Libra. But what we're talking about is the heart. Oh, I'm sorry. For some reason, I, I was thinking about Libra when you said Leo. That's that's why. It's okay. That's yeah. Good. So we, we Leo rules the heart and the back. Okay. okay. Think of courageous Leo. It's the heart would be. We 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 make a statement. For example, somebody is pretty brave. We say they they got, they got a lot of heart. Right. They got a lot of Leo. Okay. Leo's the lion. Remember. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what about Virgo? Uh, Virgo. Um, that one I'm not so sure about with Virgo. Yeah. Okay, I want you to make a note of this to yourself and write it down that you need to study Virgo's meaning more. Okay. Uh, I can give you, the, I'll give you the answers, but I want you to study this. Okay, Virgo rules the, ex, the um, elimination of the body. It rules the bowels. It rules, um, uh, basically everything to do with our food and our digestion and the way we handle the elimination of pollutants and other things from our body. Uh, Virgo is a cleansing energy. Okay. It's a sign of purity in its highest meaning. So when we talk about Mary, the mother of God, we're talking Virgo. Okay. Not defiled by any sin. She, you know, she didn't even have sex to have a child. Okay. <laughs> so that's all Virgo stuff. Okay. Virgo, the virgin. Okay. 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 So, you know, it's you can get the hypochondriac in a Virgo energy. Somebody that's so obsessed by cleanliness that it becomes an obsession and they become hypochondriac. So those are just things that you you kind of you kind of get a general feeling for all this. You 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 know that extends so many different areas. It doesn't just jump on one word or two. Um, so. When we get to Libra, we're talking now about what? The back or the lower back, mostly, right? What other part of the body? What uh, organ? Uh, what organ? Um, for Libra? Uh, that, um, I guess I'm not sure about that. What that's good. That's good. Just acknowledge it, okay? So yeah. Come back and study that a little bit. Um, Libra rules the kidneys. Okay. And Venus rules Libra, right? Yes. Venus, Venus rules what? Sweets. Interesting, isn't it? Right. Venus, what can destroy the kidneys more than sugar? Think about it. It's kind of interesting. What is that, Elena? Elena says, ask me. Um, I have a craving for sugar. Always have had all my life and it doesn't catch up to you always when you're young you know it takes a it takes a while it took me 83 years to start having diabetes okay and uh i've been able to hold it at bay because of my my wife's insistence that i eat better and uh, so there's been times when it's been totally gone because i discipline or my wife disciplines me enough that i don't get into the sugars but you notice the connection. Can you imagine this? You know, 2,000 years ago, astrology has been around longer than that. People understood the relationship between Venus, Libra, and kidneys. Crazy, isn't it? How they, yeah. all, how they figure all that out? I mean, I thought it took a, a doctor to understand that. So yeah. Hippocrates was the master physician in his old days. And he always said, let food be your medicine. <laughs> and Pocrates, I mean, you know, he was the father of medicine in a way, you know. And yeah. uh, he definitely was an astrologer and understood it. So, all right. 
So we went to Libra. How about Scorpio? Oh, it's all secretive now. <laughs> Scorpio is the regenerative energy, so that's really the regenerative organs, like the right, the male and female regenerative organs for the most part, right? Exactly. It's actually the the penis and everything. It's everything to do with sex. Okay. Um, you know, it's like it's ruled by in the old days. It was called. It was ruled by um, the phoenix. They didn't use the scorpion uh, as a symbol of it. The phoenix meaning it resurrected from its own fiery birth. Um, it was a bird. Okay. Um, the thing with the thing with Pluto, which is its ruler, Pluto was said to be the planet of Christ consciousness. It's the highest meaning of all the planets. And as you look at its symbol, which is the circle, not even touching the crescent, and under and underneath that is the cross. The cross being the physical form and body. It's the senses, the five senses of feeling and where we hurt or where we experience pain. It's the crucified cross. So on top of that is the crescent, the soul. And above that in Pluto's symbol, we have a circle that doesn't even touch the, the soul. It's the spirit that's resurrected. It doesn't even get connected to the, to the soul and the body. It stays above all that. And it's kind of like the part of us that observes ourselves and observes the behavior of ourselves that sits above us in a way and says, wow, look at, you know, I've heard uh, terrible stories, of course, of people who have done dastardly things in their life and um, their soul will literally separate from their bodies. And they'll observe themselves committing an act. The body, the soul and the spirit won't even want to participate in. And when they commit that act of violence or crime, they're, they're, they they separate, their bodies separate, and they see themselves doing the action. And that's that part of us that doesn't, doesn't connect. It stays above us as the observer in all of us. Pluto, Edgar Cayce called Pluto the planet of Christ consciousness. And it's the highest of all the meanings. But it's also been denigrated mostly in astrology as pure destruction. In a way, it is. It is very destructive because it has to destroy the, the old form to create the new. It has to, for there to be a resurrection, there needs to be a death. So, you know, it's the death of the ego is involved, not just the physical form. All these are permeating meanings that have more than one meaning. So when we talk astrology, you may do, be doing a chart, you see a very powerful Pluto working in that chart, but it may be the death of the ego, not the death of a person. Okay. So I want to say to you, when you're going through these mutable, cardinal, um, and fixed meanings, the cardinals can be the most physical in their destructive energy. Uh, the cardinal signs, if you have a grand cross and cardinal signs, it can mean, especially if it's dealing with the heavy planets like Saturn and Mars, it can mean physical diseases or problems. It can be chronic problems, especially if it's Saturn involved. Saturn's old name was Kronos, Kronos or chronic, meaning of long duration. So you get somebody that's dying of cancer, for example. Um, I've seen this in charts very clearly, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's out of consciousness, though. It's there, you, you know, if you can get them above and beginning to understand the mechanisms of praise and thanksgiving instead of finding fault and accusing and all that negative stuff then you can turn them around sometimes i had a student uh, who beautiful girl she was a model actually and her husband owned a jewelry store beautiful people loved them both and um, she ended up getting cancer on her face it had a growth on her face and one of her favorite expressions because i'm a student of the word you know, we talk about people say, I'm a student of the word. They usually mean the Bible. Um, but the word you're speaking and the word you're saying every day of your life is having an impact on your life. 
and on your your life or death, if you would. And her favorite expression, whenever she had a crisis with her boyfriend and, um, and you know, and her mate, it was always the same expression. I've got to face this. And guess what happened on her face? She developed a malignant tumor. As soon as I made her aware of this and told her what was causing this problem, and she stopped saying that. That, that this went away without doctor's intervention. Wow. So, you know, the, the word is made flesh. Remember that? Okay, everybody sees that as Christ. But you're all the word made flesh. For every word you say, you're held accountable for. Okay? So these are these are things that you need to learn. The metaphysics of this is that I keep going back to that. These are the things you need to learn to understand the relationships between things, okay? So if you see a lot of cardinality in a chart, it very often manifests as a physical problem, especially if it's uh, the moon involved in Saturn and Mars. But the difference of those energies are expressed in different ways. Mars will be more infections, It'll be more burns, skulls, wounds, where Saturn will be more, more arthritic problems, skeletal brain problems, and skin problems. Psoriasis, different types of skin ailments, are generally related to Saturn. And that gets back to guilt, the accuser of our brother. But it's all connected. That's why I'm trying to, I know I tie it all up. I talk too much sometimes because I'm supposed to be testing you right now. But I just want you to see it all, the implication. I want, to, I want you to go deeper into yeah. the soul of that person in that chart. Okay, am I making sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you said yes. Okay. <laughs> all mm -hmm. right. So, okay. Let's take some true or false. Um, did we get through the signs of the body we did? Did we do them all? Do them all? We didn't oh. do them. Okay, we did Scorpio last. Sagittarius is what? What part of the body? The thighs of the legs. Good for you. Good for you. Absolute true answer. Okay. How about um, uh, Scorp uh, Capricorn next? What about that one? Capricorn would be the knees. Good. I mean, I uh, you'll see Saturn afflictions that are predominant in a chart and Capricorn active in a chart. I was sitting with a client. This woman brought me, I had done a reading for her and uh, the guy sitting at my desk. And uh, I saw his, I said, there's something wrong with your knees. Saturn is really afflicting and Capricorn, you're really catching some afflictions in your knees. And he pulled away from the chair because his legs were underneath the table. And he pulled away and he pulled his pants legs up and his legs were all wrapped on the knees. He had, he was almost crippled from his knees. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's amazing how you see things. And, you know, I couldn't see under the desk, didn't realize he had these problems. But and when he walked in, I didn't see him limping. But the point being is that the charts speak to you and they tell you something. They're trying to talk to you. Once you learn to listen, did you hear that? Listen. And that's listening with your eyes and your soul and understanding the real meaning and implication of these aspects. So Capricorn rules the knees. It also rules the skeletal frame in general, the teeth, the bones. People have a lot of problems with Saturn, generally have a lot of problems with, with their teeth. Um, um, and that is interesting because in this country, we have good dental prosthesis, all kinds of good things we can do if we have a bad mouth. In other countries, you look around, even the beauty contest, you see the beauties that are up there. In some countries, they don't have that kind of dental care and their teeth will not be perfect. In this country, we can, we can have all sorts of teeth problems where we can remedy them in appearance as well as in, in truth. So we, we're dealing with Capricorn Saturn energies, that skeletal frame, okay? So how about Aquarius? What do you think it rules? Um, Aquarius, I think, is the... Uh, part of the body. 
Well, underneath the knees, we've got uh, just the, you know, like the, the shins or like the legs, you know, the shins. About uh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I'm, I'm going to let you say it. <laughs> um, I think that's all I have. I mean, it's really just, the, you know, the shins and uh, because I believe Pisces. What's behind the shins? Behind the shins, uh, the um, calves. <laughs> good, good. You answered the question. Okay. Okay. Uh, we, got, <laughs> we got you there. Okay. And finally, the Pisces. Pisces, the feet. Good, good. Now, that's an example in my chart. I have Mars afflicted in, um, in Pisces. I have Mars in Pisces squaring, squaring my son in Mercury. It took me a lot of years, again, to have foot problems. I, you know, I used to run. I was one of the you know best long distance runners around. I was really good. I was on the track team in school. I never thought I'd ever have a problem with my feet. But in my later life, I was bringing these these shelves and these these huge oak cabinets that I have in my room that I'm sitting in front of right here, and I was bringing them up a staircase. And my wife said, "Please don't do this." She always had more wisdom than I did. Please don't do this. Hire somebody to do this. And I was at the bottom of the load and had a Latino guy working, helping me. And I tore out my plantar fasciitis. And I had to have surgery because I was in such pain. And pain is Mars and injuries like that are, you know, very much uh, typical of a, of a Mars and Pisces the force of Mars caused damage, which, you know, uh, caused permanent. And, and anyway, it took me years to recover from that. Um, and, and even today, I have a hard time walking barefoot because the arch is no longer there, you know. It, anyway, enough of that. So it, it's interesting also, by the way, when you see these afflictions, um, you tend to think of them as being right there at that time. But you can kind of warn a client sometimes Look at you know. I noticed you have the sun afflicted by Saturn and Mars and and Leo. You know you want to be careful with your back. You know you you don't have to say they don't necessarily have a problem right now, but they very easily could. And I've had clients where I've warned them about their back, and I see aspects that show problems in that area of their body. And uh, another week or two goes by as quick as that, they'll come back and say, Ron. I don't believe you. I just just pulled my whole back out. I've been going to chiropractor. I don't know what I'm going to do. So, you know, the warning sometimes, you know, I'm often very aware of the power of your influence and what you say to someone. There's a double-edged sword in some of this because you want to make sure you're not planting the seed <laughs> that makes them believe so much they're going to have something happen to them that it actually happens, okay? Um, and those are things that you you have to weigh those things out. How do you share a potential problem with a client, uh, especially let's say it's a relationship? You know, I see you're going to have relationship problems. That, well, my God, you know they're going to have them. You know, especially if they start believing it enough. You know, as a man believeth in his heart, so it is. That's scripture. As a man believeth in his heart, so it is. So you want to be kind of careful. I mean, when I I I remember doing Vanita's chart and I told her she was likely going to have a car accident. And it happened within, what, a week, Vanita? Now, did it, it happened within, it happened 14 hours later. Okay. Yeah, so, it happened the very next uh, morning. So when I made that prediction, it, here's the question. Did I have it? Did she have the accident because I had influenced her to believe she would? You have to ask that question in, in your work. Or is it impossible that she could have had caused the accident when it wasn't anything she could have controlled? In this case, the person hit her from behind. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't have had anything to do with this in terms of believing it. Okay. So you right. could have said, well, maybe she put her foot on the brake too fast, you know, but she didn't. You know what I mean? The, the whole message here is the, the, the question, and I always have, I mean, if a doctor tells me 
that I remember a doctor telling me once, well, you, you can expect this to happen because you're, you know, as you get older, you're going to have a lot of problems. I really took that to heart. And that was a, a very bad thing to tell me. Yeah. Because he's a man of influence and a man of knowledge. And I respected him. And so when you start listening to an astrologer, you know, you also have to think about how much influence and impact is what they're saying have on that person. So you got to go gently, carefully when you do all this work. Okay. I remember a psychic telling my wife once she could never have a child. She was so angry. She walked out of the room. She was two months pregnant at the time. She didn't know it though. She was two months <laughs> pregnant. This psychic tells her she, she can never bear children. <laughs> you know, she was one of my students. Yes. Claimed to be psychic. But Elena was so angry. We were visiting somewhere in, in the Bay Area. And a I, oh, I had a class there. That's where it was. Yeah. And she pops up and tells Elena this. Elena was so offended. She left the house. Left the house. She was, she was so angry. And she, she had good cause to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, there are a lot of stuff I see going on with the psychics and all this. So you want to have respect and regard for what you say. You want to be careful. You have to be very gingerly careful when you're dealing with clients. Okay. All right. That's why I spend a lot of time on things that have happened in the past. <clears throat> you know, um, I would like to let them realize how accurate it is because they know I don't know that happened in their life, you know? Um, <clears throat> okay, let's keep going here. Second house represents marriage and uh, and, and business, the partnerships. Is that true or false? The second uh, house represents marriage and business partnerships. True or false? False. Good, good answer. Yeah, the second house represents possessions and, you know, yeah. isn't that the source? I don't need this, honey. I don't really need it. Don't be so go up to hung up. Okay. Okay, so... Okay. Hopes, goals, and wishes reside in the 12th house. Is that true or false? Uh, hopes, goals, and wishes, I would say that is uh, true, although I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a little bit unsure about that one. Okay. All right. I want you to think about this. Elena wants me not to answer your question. I want you to make notes so you can come back home. I don't need know. to do that. I mean, you will not I can check it here. Yes. She's really a little bit stern with me. I'm making notes, by the way, of yeah. what I, to go over. So just to let you know. Yeah. Well, she's upset because I'm not doing it her way. For you, please put minus plus and take notes. Yeah. Okay. The first house tells us a lot about the person's personality. True or false? True. Good answer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Family and childhood reside in the fourth. True. Good answer. The first child is always in Taurus? Uh, I would say that's false. It's true. It is false. You're right. Okay. Uh, your daily work and survival are governed by the 10th house, true or false? False. Good answer. What house is? Um, I think that is the sixth house. Perfect answer, good for you, good for you. Okay, um, religion and education is governed by Sagittarius, true or false? True. Good, absolutely, yes. Difference between Sagittarius and Gemini in terms of education are what? Um, Sagittarius is more like the completed education, so higher learning, things like that, where the yeah. other one is, you know, it's just early education. It's it's just getting started and you know, basic learning, things like that. That's perfect. That's really right answer. Okay. Um, people that have a lot of Gemini influence in third house, you know, uh, particularly Gemini, um, are very good at trivia general you know right. see these people on these game shows that can yeah. seem to answer every little question they usually have really good gemini mercury influences 
I have Mercury and Sagittarius. So I have a hard time with basic learning. Not it's like I don't I don't I even have a difficulty teaching basics. You know, I, you know, I mean I want to get into the college area first. And I noticed that even when I was studying astrology, I was always trying to find the the most complex, the most advanced astrology to study because I didn't have time for all the basics. <laughs> and, and one day I read a book um, by Ellen McCaffrey, which blew me away, by the way, um, called Graphic Astrology. You can write this down. It's a good book. Graphic <laughs> Astrology. Um, and she is so good at the basics and she's the one that really taught me the roots of the meanings of the planets that's What's the again graphic astrology by ellen mccaffrey okay i really recommend the book she's really and she's got other books out that are very good she's one of the few that i really as a teacher she's one of the best okay so so anyway, it brought me back to the basics in a way that was enjoyable. I don't know why, it's the way she writes and the way she teaches. Like I learned things I would have never learned anywhere else. For example, I learned the difference between Jupiter and Pisces and Jupiter and Sag. Jupiter rules both signs, but we right now we use Neptune as supplanted Jupiter as a ruler of Pisces, just like we supplanted Mars from the rulership of Pluto, uh, Scorpio, and now we use Pluto, okay? But these rulers, these ancient rulerships still are important, and yeah. you'll kind of respect them a little more. So example, Jupiter and Pisces, and Ellen McCaffrey, I learned from her. It had two meanings in the old days. Jupiter and Sag was one meaning, and Jupiter and Pisces, the other rulership it ruled, had another meaning. And Jupiter and Sagittarius was called a thunderbolt. Pluvius. Pluvius was what it was called. And um, Jupiter in Pisces was called the rainmaker and was also called a uh, tonnens, had two different names. So you don't learn that generally in anything you read. I, she's an amazing woman. She's really good on top of things, you know. She taught me a lot. So if you get the book, I'd suggest you do graphic astrology. So, okay. so what? For example, when I think I may have shared the story of when I was in prison, how I don't know that I did or didn't. Um, for those of you who are listening for the first time and don't know me, I spent nine years in prison as a young man, um, having the dubious distinction of being the most wanted man in the United States at one point in my life for armed robberies, and. Um, wanted in New York, Maryland, Virginia, Ohio, Texas, and Michigan. Anyway, that's not a, not a good thing to tell you, but it's something that really shaped my life, thank God, because it allowed me to study for, for nine years in prison and to research and to delve into these mysteries because I didn't have any girls to chase and any wine to drink. I was there for nine years in a little small cell. It was kind of like a monastery for me. Uh, kept me away from the world's needs. I didn't have to worry about food and shelter or earning a living. I, all I had to do was stay and either vegetate or learn and grow and try to grow. So I became the court astrologer in prison and um, learned it because nobody was going anywhere. I had a captive clientele. I could observe their lives very carefully. Out here, I do a chart. I never see the client again unless they call me back and say, do another year. Okay, let, no more digressions, okay? So, where was I going with all that? Okay, so I had the experience of having actually um, an amazing thing happen to me. Um, I don't know why I even possessed me to say it, but one day it was pouring, this was in January in Jackson, Michigan. It usually snows, and it was pouring down rain. And I walked outside and had to go to uh, pharmacy for I was on a drug test of some kind and maybe it had influence on me somehow too I, I never know they were very watchful over me when I was on this experimental drug which you can volunteer to do when you're in prison and all of a sudden I was obsessed to say Lord as a witness to me cause this rain to cease 
and it stopped instantly. And I was shocked. And I don't know why he said it. And um, and it turned to fog, just like amazingly quick, from rain to fog. And um, I was so excited about that. And I went over and told my friend and myself, one of my guys that I knew very well, Larry. I said, Larry, Larry, look at my coat's all wet. Look what happened. I asked the Lord to stop the rain and stop. He said, Ron, I think you're losing it. <laughs> that probably, uh, but I said it actually happened. And uh, the next day, same thing happened. It was raining. I said, Lord, please stop the rain. It stopped. The third day, I said it different. I said, Lord, cause this rain to cease for 24 hours. And during this period, I was neither sleeping or eating. And I was awake uh, 24 hours a day. But I wasn't insomniac. I would lay down to sleep, and I was very wide awake. And I noticed the frontal lobe of my brain had seemed to open up. There's a different part of my brain was open, and I was conscious from a different level. And I didn't want food. If I ate food, it tastes like ashes in my mouth. And I would eat a piece of bread or something, and it would taste like ashes in my mouth. So I was going through some kind of transformation. All I ate, all I did, I was just having tea and coffee not coffee, rather tea, rather tea and honey. I didn't drink coffee at that time in my life. Anyway, the sender of rain, Jupiter, I'm Zeus. I mean, I represent Zeus. I have Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius sun, Sagittarius Mercury, Venus, and Sagittarius, a lot of Sagittarian stuff. The point I'm getting at is I saw the effects of the rainmaker in my own life. I don't usually tell the story. It's a little bit the charts okay but i've had a lot of things happen in my life that are very metaphysical and mysterious that i've never quite always been able to understand but i do see astrological relationships to the center of rain in tonnes and in jupiter's meaning okay so i have jupiter and pisces i guess i made that point <laughs> i have jupiter and pisces in my chart so on a grand cross being crucified and remember, I've taught you both, and all of you, I've taught you, anytime you see Jupiter on a cross, there'll be a resurrective energy if that person learns to praise and give thanks and to operate on Jupiter's scale. If that happens, then Jupiter does amazing things. So Jupiter is, a, Jupiter is the redeemer, it's the resurrector. It's Christ, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So if you have Jupiter on the cross in your chart or in a square, opposing, afflicting, don't look at that as a negative in their chart. They've, they're going to learn something through their pain and they're going to be better for it because that's how Jupiter works. Okay. So except for those nine years of my imprisonment, I wouldn't be here today talking to you with astrology because it forced me to learn and to grow spiritually. Jupiter forces you to do that. Okay. All right. So, and I have Jupiter, Jupiter uh, in the third house. In Pisces, what's the third house do? What did we talk about earlier about third house? Gemini's house. Um, it's third house, Gemini. Um, that would be, well, the third house of Gemini, from, I, I always think of like communication. You know, it's like, uh, you know, basic communication and basic kind of. Um, you said it. You said it. Yeah, it's communication. It's a teacher. Okay. It's right. Teacher, okay. So, you know, we we um. So when we when we're doing these charts, uh, you know, there's so many different areas you can pull out, but I I want to just go through more of you. Okay. Um, uh, your latter part of your life is uh, represented by the 12th house, true or false? Uh, partially, I think it's more the 10th house and 11th house. The Maybe. latter part of your life. Yeah. Um, you say true I, or false? 
The 12th house, I would say false. Good answer. Okay. Okay. Religion and education is governed by Sagittarius. True or false? True. Okay. Is the 10th house rule high values in money? No. False. Good. Okay. You can find out about your career and, and your bosses from the 6th house. Is that true or false? Um, not really. Typically, I think that's a 10th house. Good answer. Good answer. Long journeys and new age is always what, Aquarius? You said long journeys? Yeah. And new age is always what, Aquarius? Um, let me think about that for a second. Uh, long journeys and new age is that Aquarius? Um, <clears throat> False. Yeah, actually, long journeys is not. Yeah, but Aquarius is. So that was a hard one. It was kind of through a curve by that. And two two answers. Okay. Yeah. All siblings hang out in Gemini. Is that true or false? Uh, you said siblings. Yeah, brothers, sisters all hang out in in Gemini. Is that true or false? That's true for the most it, part. It is. Yeah. yeah. Your brothers, your sisters, third house, Gemini, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you're when you're doing charts, you can also see relationships between the person and their brothers and sisters. Um, by by looking at, for example, third house, looking at Gemini and looking at Mercury. Remember, there are three ways to look at something: the sign, the house, and the planet. So if you see a lot, let's say I, I do a chart and I see Saturn afflicting Mercury. I know that there's some real hard stuff involved with a brother or sister. Generally, it's true. Okay. And there's a lot of hard lessons they've had to come to, um, a lot of conflicts they've had that involve a brother or a sister. And so I think you have an aspect like that, don't you? Uh, I have some, some, uh, well, I don't think I have those kind of tough aspects on, on, on Gemini, but um, I definitely have a, Je uh, a Gemini and Neptune affliction, which can easily be represented by my, my brothers, you know, by my brothers, my two brothers. Okay. So it's not, the, the thing is, you want to look at three ways. You want to see it through the Mercury. Mercury is the best way to see it. Okay. okay. And not the house so much. The house is the last thing I look at. Um, so sometimes refine the meaning, but more importantly is the sign. I mean, it is a sign and, of course, the planet itself. Yes. Okay. Which house represents the disciplinary father? Which one? A loving father. Uh, disciplinary would be Capricorn, so that's the 11th house. I don't know. That's the tenth house. That's the tenth house. Good answer. The loving father would be uh, Leo, which would be uh, the fifth house. Good for you. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. So, because Saturn, the Saturn represents. Remember the disciplinary planet. It's the one that sets the rules. It always wants to define everything. You'll be home by twelve o'clock. If you don't, you're in trouble. You know, I mean, that's Saturn talking, right? right? The loving father would say it different. Honey, I really want you to be home by 12 because I'll worry about you if you're not here. You know, you know, it's a whole different approach, right? So, you know, some of us have had a little bit of both with our fathers, okay? You had a father that was a military, so he's more of a disciplinarian. Right. Probably, I'm assuming. So we, sure. we, we experience these things and it shapes our life, okay? Really. Uh, my my father and my parents were very accusatory, very fault finding, and I was a hard child to raise. I'd been in boarding homes till I was nine years old, so I was a messed up kid. I'm sure I wasn't easy to raise. I know I wasn't. So anyway, so where was I going with that? So, 
but it, I end up writing a book on how to praise and give thanks and stop accusing. <laughs> it only <laughs> the show, right? Uh, it's in your life that Jupiter will translate it. You see where I'm coming? Jupiter yeah. will take that cross I had to bear of all those years of fault finding. I mean, I would I would draw a beautiful horse on a piece of paper because I used to be very artistic. And then my, my father, my mother accused me of tracing it. You didn't draw that. Uh -huh. And it would belittle me. So I never picked up a pen again, you know, for wow. hard, you know, to learn. And, um, but I was a great draftsman for some reason. I really excelled in that. But the thing is that a lot of the negative things that we have experienced in our life, if we can just begin to praise and give thanks and trust in good, it'll translate that into good. It, it's, it's all things work together for good for them that love God. Okay, there's a little stipulation there. You got to love God. And how do you love God? You praise and you give thanks to him. That's all he asks from us is praise and give thanks. Let the fruit of your lips be the sacrifice of praise. And in all things, give thanksgiving. Stop cursing. Every time you curse or cuss or accuse, you bring yourself down and everybody around you. It's the, 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 that whole thing of accusing, the accusing Saturn spirit, okay? Mars is the anger, okay? Like I've got Mars square sun. I've got a quick anger. I know I do. And it flares up easy. I know that. Doesn't take a lot to push my button. And I used to curse that. I said, why am I so, what a, you know, I blame it on my childhood. You know, about abuse and all that. But that's not what it's about. It's like, you know, I that, that same anger preserved me alive for nine years in prison where there was a lot of threatening things going on in my life around people that would kill you in a minute you know but they feared me because of my anger <laughs> and they realized he may not be the tallest big, biggest guy on earth but you don't want to mess with ron because my my anger would overwhelm them with the results that they would you know you turn this cheek you turn the back, another cheek so you know i learned in prison you know you you fight you you learn to live on that level you communicate on a level they understand. Excuse me, please don't do that. Doesn't do you too well in prison. <laughs> but it's Mac upside the head works, you know. So, so anyway, okay. So, okay. So we've gone through a lot. What house keeps other people's wills and legacies? Uh, the eighth house. Good for you. Amazing. You're doing well. Talk a little bit about the twelfth house. What do you think it means? Oh, um, okay. So the eighth house is home to uh, Neptune. Good. Right. So Neptune in a positive aspect is, uh, you know, spirituality, um, really like, you know, interconnectedness with spiritual concepts, I would say, you know, oh. otherworldliness, things like that, dreams and things like that. And then if it has a negative affliction or a negative side then it gets into more like escape escapism drugs self-undoing prison things like that like, beautiful uh, How tough you're reading you're reading it like the book that's so good you said so well so Thank what you. is the key word for i for um every every sign has a key word what's the key word for pisces uh that one uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't know the key words yet. Okay. So. I'm going to go around the whole chart with you real quick, and I want you to study it a little bit more. It just you actually had the essence of the meaning. You talked okay. about beliefs and all that. The key word of Pisces is "I believe." Okay. 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 Sign of the fish, right? Right. You've been in the Piscean age for two thousand years. Christ was the ushering in of that age. Fish Fridays. His disciples, he called them what? Fishers of men. How many were there? Twelve. What's the twelfth sign? Pisces. Okay, it's a water sign. We have water baptism. All these symbols that be denote the age we're in. Okay. So, so Aries is I am. And Christ was also the ushering in of that Piscean age, but he was the ending of the Aries age, the sacrificial lamb of God. He was both, okay? 
his life represented both those signs. He was the I am, the Christ, when, when Moses spoke and ushered in the Aries age, from the Tarian age, he said, no longer worship the golden calf. Why? Because it's not about Taurus anymore. He said, but now it's about the blood of the lamb. Put it on your on your doors, your doors, doorstep, and it'll, what is it? Doorpost. Yeah, yeah, and it'll, it'll preserve your first child alive. Right. Okay. So it was all about it was all about Aries at that point, the sacrificial lamb of God. When he spoke to the burning bush, he's told by God that who because he said, Who am I gonna say sent me with this message? And and God spoke to him through the burning bush, said, You tell him that I am that I am sent you. The God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, is called I am that I am. And you are who you are because of who you believe you are. I am that I am. I am the best computer guy on the planet. I believe that. If you don't believe it, nobody else will. You see where I'm coming from? So I am that I am is the holy of holies. I am Christ when they ask him about how can he speak of Abraham and the prophets. He said, you're but less than 30 years old or you're 30 years old. And his response was, I am and I am and I am. He didn't say I am, I was and I will be. He was the eternal presence. And you are all the eternal presence when you dwell in this space right here, in this present moment. The greatest gift that you ever had in your life is the present moment. And when we give a gift, we say, I'm giving you a present. It's interesting language, isn't it? it I'm is. giving you a present. Well, you're given a present all the time, right now, or every moment of your life. But most of you don't live there in the present. You're living in the past or you're worrying about the future. How can you be in how can you be in, in the present if you're always dwelling on the past? And you're thinking about what's going to happen in the future. How about being here now? Beautiful book in the 60s. Remember that? Be here now. Be here now. So the only way you'll be a good astrologer is by being here now. Being at one with that client and one with that chart. Okay. I get a little talkative. Okay. What a Okay. Okay. Which sign is very fortuitous with money and love? That's definitely, uh, well, it could be two different ones, I suppose, but uh, I would say that's Venus. Okay, which sign is oh, that? What sign? Oh, Virgo. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so Venus, um, I suppose that could be, oh, with money and love, that's Taurus. Good for you, good for you. That's second house. Okay. Venus rules Taurus. It also rules, of course, Libra. Okay. So what house do we keep the food? My wife, my physicist. And what house do we keep the food? <laughs> well, I, that one's a very difficult answer to answer. But what house do you think rules food and nutrition and all that stuff? Uh, I have to think about that for a second, but um, I'm guessing here. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I think uh, the fourth house. No, no. Yeah, well, the food. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about this one. That's all right. That's okay. Um, see, I'm not supposed to tell you, but I, I, I can't do it that way. It's uh, Virgo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What you put into your body and what comes out. Okay. okay. Um, in what house do you personally keep your skeletons in a closet? Not sure about that as far as what house. Uh, that skeletons in the closet. Uh, that would be the eighth house. Actually, it's true. Um, remember, I told you that whenever you see Pluto 
and Saturn afflicted. Okay, I see everybody looking at their chart. If you see Pluto and Saturn <laughs> afflicted, there's skeletons in the closet involving, remember Saturn is skeletons in the closet. So wherever that is, if it's afflicted, it's trying to say, I've got skeletons in my closet concerning this matter. In this case, let's say it's Pluto. I've got skeletons in my closet that I don't want to talk about. I don't want anybody to know about that involves sex. You see what I'm telling you? Yes. I've done some terrible things in that area, and I don't want them to be known. Okay, eighth house secrets, right? So right. you have the secret house of eight. You had the planet of Pluto to Saturn afflictions, and now you've got a couple indicators there, right? There's something right. going on here with this person they don't want to talk about. And they probably will never want to talk about. And if you uncover them, they're going to be really upset. You uncover their secrets, you're going to be upset. So, um, you know, which house, by the way, is short journeys as opposed to long journeys? Uh, hmm. Short journeys. I think, well, the fifth house. And it's not right. Yeah. <clears throat> what's what's the planet of I mean the house of short learning of learning basics oh six yeah oh I'm oh, sorry of oh, the learning yeah hmm. okay the short the short the short journeys uh and the long journeys is similar to a, a basic learning and higher learning. They're, okay. they're, they're related. Okay. So Gemini, third house, would be short journeys. Okay. okay. And the ninth would be long journeys, like flights somewhere, long trips, and things like that. Because there's Jupiter and Mercury. Mercury's communication, transportation. But Jupiter's long journeys, it's much more in depth. It's also a more in depth learning. So we kind of get, you know, all of these things are, are just part of the language, learning this language. You're doing extraordinary. You really are. You're one of the best students I've ever had, really. Uh, a couple of that I've had is Karen. Um, you know, Vanita is extraordinary. She's been from, from the beginning, she's been very extraordinary. Um, and um, I want to see Destiny grow there too. She's had so many things going on in her life, and I understand that. But if she ever dedicated herself to it and got really committed, she would be really a good astrologer. And so I'm happy to see her join us. Um, and I want to see you three form this really good cohesive group where you can share your own lives, share your secrets, share your mysteries, share the knowledge you have. It's not about, it's not, it, it all comes down to finding people that have like mind and like spirit and joining those people in your daily life, making them part of your life. They can encourage you and can in, in really not just encourage, but, um, can uh, inspire you is the word I'm looking for. Um, and uh, that's what I want to see going on with this group. I I think sometimes there's reasons for things that I, I don't always comprehend. I don't always see the whole picture. But I generally get an overall picture later in life. I'll say, wow, now I see why that all happened. Um, <clears throat> but um, you're all blessed with a gift. You just need to Nurture it, nurture it. It doesn't take a lot. Uh, it takes a little bit every day, just a little bit. Doing charts, trying to figure them out. Um, I gave you, um, I didn't get, I don't, maybe, did, did I send Putin's chart to you, Destiny? Not yet. Okay. I'm going to put it up on board here so you can all see it. Okay. Uh, we. Um, I've never done Putin's chart. You'd believe it or not, I should have. Um, I mean, I've watched his insanity for a long time. Um, you know what he names his missiles? Did I ever tell you that? No. I don't know that. 
he's got hypersonic missiles that can destroy entire nations. He has a hypersonic missile that can obliterate and be there in something like five minutes or five, is it five seconds, uh, and obliterate all of England, everything about it wouldn't exist anymore. Wow. Um, and he's threatened to use them uh, on the United States and in England. But his missiles are uh, named Satan. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to show you his chart. I want you to start. Did you get a chance to look at it a little bit, Jared? I did. Last night I took a look at it for a while, a little while. I didn't write down notes, but I kind of, you know, I just reviewed it. And I, I did pick up quite a few things. And, um, okay. All right. Give me, give me uh, something you've seen that's interesting to you. <laughs> well, one of the most, the most interesting things is that he has Saturn directly, really close in conjunction with his, with his sun. So that alone speaks volumes, right? It sure does, doesn't it? It does. Uh, you remember when we talked about, I, I taught you that Jupiter conjunct the sun is a magnificent, um, uh, um, uh, um, um, magnanimous. Help me out. What did I say? Magnanimous spirit. There you go. Magnanimous. Meaning what? Mag meaning large, magnify, for example. And animus, magnanima, animus is animal. And I, I told you if you ever see Jupiter's conjunctor in good aspect to the sun, you know, it doesn't have to be just a conjunction, for example. Jupiter conjunct the sun, Jupiter trying the sun. I'm very blessed because I have Jupiter trying my sun. Okay. It's the same as having a conjunction. It's, it means uh, magnanimous spirit. I love large animals. <laughs> That's the one thing when people that have Jupiter strong with their sun. Sun is love, right? Jupiter's, Jupiter's large animals. So, you know, I think I've shared with you, I've told people that you should own horses. And the guy responds to me, he says, we do, we own, we own racehorses. And I says, wow, you know, the chart's telling me something here. So, you know, Jupiter with the sun is really um, a very benevolent energy. Saturn with the sun is very destructive. Yes. It gives a destructive, paranoid spirit. Um, it gives a... Um, a divider and destroyer. And it's, it's the Saturn is Satan is called in the Bible, a liar, a murderer, and a deceiver from the foundation of the earth. A liar, a murderer, and a deceiver from the foundation of the earth. And if that doesn't describe Putin, nothing does. He's all of those things. Remember before he, before he invaded Ukraine? He, he he told everybody I'm not gonna I'm not gonna invade. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. He's I'm not gonna invade. He's a liar. He's a murderer, and he's a deceiver. He has no regard for human life. He's Satan himself, Saturn or Satan embodied in his spirit. Okay, and it's also joined with Neptune, the Sun, Saturn, Neptune. I'm gonna let um, you know, Vanita. You studied this before me. Uh, I think you've studied it uh, before I even asked you to. But anyway, mm -hmm. tell me what you've seen and perceived from this term. Um, the Saturn, Neptune, and Mercury together. Um, Mercury being the communication, Neptune being the lies, um, illusion. Mm -hmm. He and with Saturn, there's definitely uh, an indication for the things he's communicating can be distorted, lying, um, and also hiding things with all those being in the 12th house of secrets. That's very, uh, that, that's a big, a big thing in his, in his chart there, all of that in the 12th house, um, you know, screams, lying, hiding things, distortion of what uh, he's putting out with the mercury there. That's very true, very true. You know, and, um, you know, it's, if you think about it, how secretive he's been in the war machines he's built. No one had any inkling how dangerous this man was. He's managed to hide that very well. Um, also, um, if you look at um, 
uh, uh, where, was, where was I going to go with that? Um, Pluto's Mars. at the top of the chart as well. Um, maybe if that's where you were going, that that yeah, yeah. Pluto's on the tenth house cusp. Mm -hmm. It's right in on the on the powerhouse of the tenth, and his ruler is um, Pluto. Rules his ascendant. It rules Scorpio. So it shows his I am is part very powerful. Okay, because it's in the tenth house, which rules what your career, your your standings in the world. It's essentially um, you're rising to the top of whatever you're about. So that is also squaring um, uh, Jupiter over here. If you look, Jupiter squared um, by Pluto. And it's also squaring because of the opposition to Venus. Um, Venus is only eight degrees out of orb from being opposition to Jupiter. So you got a T cross with Jupiter, Pluto, and Venus in this chart. And um, you also have Mars when conch the moon, 150 degrees. You might, you'll hardly have a hard time finding that unless you're, you see, the more experience you have, you'll find that. Because if, um, let's take the moon back and move it back to Taurus, it's only, what, two degrees from being in Taurus? If you move it back yeah. to that sign. So, and then if you look at, you look at um, Venus, um, it's at 11 degrees Scorpio. So it's afflicting, the moon and uh, Venus are afflicted. Um, what else was it I was seeing? Um, because the Pluto is at 22 Leo and Jupiter's at 19 degrees of Taurus, what does that aspect show you? What is the aspect doing? That's a square, right? Exactly. So that brings the Venus in as well. Because even though it's a wide orb, you'll, you, it's trying to tell you something. There's something going on with Venus is about 12 degrees. So 19 and 12 is how many degrees apart? It's not that far. Right, seven. Okay, so we use an eight degree orb. So Venus, Jupiter, and Pluto are afflicted. And uh, Pluto, um, Pluto is very, very dangerous up here. And, and, and not only is it afflicting two benefics, by squares and opposite, I mean, I, but, but they're opposed as well. Um, um, Mars is uh, semi-square, uh, Venus in addition to all of this. So the planet of love, Venus, and compassion, Jupiter, is being afflicted by Pluto, which is destroyer. And Mars is afflicting it by semi-square, which is also very destructive. Remember, I've told you many times, the most dangerous planets to be afflicted in a chart are Pluto, Mars, and Saturn. Have I told you that before? Yes. Okay. So in this case, you've got them all all there. I mean, everything is in, in, in this affliction. Um, if you look at Saturn, it's 17 Libra. It's exactly 150 degrees from Jupiter over here which means that Saturn is afflicting Jupiter and the moon, okay? So where I'm coming from all this is the quincunc is 150 degrees. It's also one of the most afflicting energies in the charts of anybody. Uh, it's overlooked a lot because it's one sign outside of an opposition. In other words, if you took Saturn and you said, where's the opposition point? It's 17 degrees Aries, the opposite point, because it's 17 degrees Libra. Am I making sense? Yes. Uh, so any if it's Aries and the next sign is Taurus, and it's exact same degrees, Jupiter's 19, Saturn's 17. It's exactly quincunc within two degrees of afflicting Jupiter. So compassion is destroyed by Jupiter. I mean, destroyed by Saturn. Mars... Mars is um, 
uh, 26 degrees um, Sagittarius. It's also afflicting by quincunct Jupiter, which is at 20 degrees, basically. It's 1944. It's at 20 degrees. I should be marking these when I do this so you can see them better. You still got the chart up, everybody? Yes. Okay. So if you look here, this is almost 20 degrees, and this is 26. That's 150 degrees, just short of six degrees. Okay. Now, if you go over here, you got a quincunc going from Jupiter to Saturn over here. So you have Jupiter, Mars, you have Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn all afflicting together here in a quincunc. It's called the finger of God or faded, very faded. So he's, you know, he also, he also has Pluto up here afflicting this T-cross of Jupiter. So it's afflicting everything in Venus, which is also, you know, in Venus, he's got Venus and Scorpio. His love life has always been secretive. His girlfriends, the Olympic winner, who he has, I think, a couple child with, ch children with. Maybe one, we're not sure. Uh, but very few people know much about it. And then we have Uranus here in, in, involved in this. Uranus and Neptune. Um, or not Uranus, I'm sorry. You got Mercury right there in Neptune. Didn't mean Uranus. And um, I was going to say Uranus is sitting at 18 degrees of Cancer. It's afflicting all these planets. I mean, how many more planets can we get afflicted? And, <laughs> yeah, and Uranus rules um, society at large, the larger, it's humanity, basically. And, um, and Saturn and his son is threatening humanity with nuclear war. Okay. And he's using all of these energies to destroy humanity, basically. That's what he wants to do. Mm. So you're seeing you, the, you said that uh, Uranus and, and Cancer kind of re represents the humanity? Very much so, yeah. It's, uh, it, Uranus itself rules humanity. It's uh, Remember, Libra is like relationship sign. Gemini is the one-on-one -on -one brother, sister kind of sign. And yeah. Uranus rules humanity at large. And it rules the new age, okay, as well. So, you know, we're getting, wow. yeah, we're, you know, the destruction of everything potentially is in his hands. And, uh, he, you know, his, his missiles are called Satan. He named him Satan. Why would he do that? Because he is Satan himself. He's the personification of him. I've been describing Putin for years, not for years, but for a long, long time as uh, as the liar, murder, deceiver from the foundation of the earth, Saturn. I never did his chart before yesterday, or uh, you know, I, I first time I looked at it, and I should have. I mean, you think world affairs, it would be of high interest to me. I should have done it, especially my wife knows so much about what's going on in Ukraine and Russia, because she speaks the language. But, you know, she's seen this man and who he is, you know, from up close. But anyway, that's just some of it. We, um, Vanita, I think Vanita said she did uh, progressions and transits and she did the cosmic key uh, on that. So let me get a sip of tea and, hmm. Uh, I emailed uh, both of them to you, the new moon for this last new moon and the next new moon. I did uh, both of those. Okay, let me let me come back to... And then... Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. That's all right. You're back on. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like you to share what you've seen, and if you'd like to, you feel good about it. Yeah, in and, and reference to the cosmic key or just the chart in general? Yeah, the, let me take in... You brought it into my email, you said? Yes, sir. 
Okay. Uh, in the chart in general, just furthermore, um, he's, you know, Ron talked about earlier how the houses give you a little bit more detail. Um, that moon is in the eighth house. That's secrets. Um, you know, uh, that Pluto at the top of the chart, Pluto being power, intensity, top of the chart being the career. Also, mm -hmm. elevation gives weight to the planets so that the highest planet in the chart is going to carry a lot of weight. And so for Putin, that is Pluto. And Pluto is power, intensity. Um, you know, the sun is in the 11th house there. That's going to give him 11th house ruling Aquarius. It's going to be a little bit detached. Um, and then the Venus in the first house, it's not quite conjunct his ascendant, but it's still in the first house. So relationships are very important to him and it's all or nothing. There's no in between with him. It's 1000% loyal. It's love or hate or, you know, um, so just to, you know, uh, give some more details on the natal chart there. Also, also Venus, um, Let's see, you said something. There. Oh, I was going to say the um, aspect between Venus and what were you talking about? Um, it's in Scorpio. There. Oh, um, oh I, I remember what I was going to say. Venus, Venus rising in the east gives a kind of a, a attractiveness. Um, he has a bit of attractiveness He's in his own way. Of course, I see him in a different light, but his spirit. So He's always well dressed, presents yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, and his physical body has good features. He's got good. He's nothing like out of balance. Venus rising gives attractiveness of some kind, um, and it helps for anybody that's got it rising. It helps give beauty. Um, so it's part of the I am energies there, and uh, it is conjunct the ascendant. It's only eight degrees away. So eight, eight degrees from the ascendant. And uh, um, I didn't get the, uh, I didn't get, I got the natal chart from you, but I didn't get the. Uh, Maybe you check the spam. I'll do it again here though. Okay. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah, it came a little earlier than this. Okay, okay let me, let me put it up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I need to move it first from my where it's at. I'm um, also with that Venus. Um, they're in the first house with it being in Scorpio again Pluto is is covered in ice so it's going to be like a cold appearance he doesn't give you much he doesn't have uh, you know facial expressions are minimal if at all um, so those are all pretty accurate as well yeah he's very cold <laughs> anybody that could kill the way he kills with him just doesn't care you know what I mean Okay, okay, now I can do this. Um, I can do this one second here. We go. So, we're, you know, you're very blessed you have this uh, cosmic key. And um, um, Benita said she'll help you learn to use that, by the way. So, and you're already, you know, you're already there. You're well on your way. So, it's just applying it and then, you know, practicing it. But you're there. Yeah. Um, also, I think, um, Destiny, do you have Cosmic Key? I do, yeah. I you believe my it? mom has a couple copies, too. Yeah, she does. So, we're very blessed to have this, because uh, without it, you could never do what we can do with this thing. Um, it's, it's the inner chart is the natal chart. Um, the second circle out is the progress chart and the transit chart is the outer chart 
So the things we'd be doing is to look for the cosmic key. As we look for three influences, we want to see the Saturn out here in the transits, which is at 20, almost 21 Aquarius. And if you look at that, it's exactly opposing right now Pluto. Is everybody with me? Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, exact. 21. Um, that's quite amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That Pluto is being triggered 100% uh, right now. It has been for the last couple of months, obviously. And that looks like the beginning of his war in Ukraine. Somebody had mentioned to me, I don't know, it was Benita, that mm -hmm. she thought that um, Putin was definitely using astrology to do and make his moves. Um, and I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that's not true. You know? Yes, he also has Pluto in the progress chart too, right? And they're right behind each other. Let's look at Pluto in the progress. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't do I don't do progress Pluto, but I do progress Moon, and it's twelve. I just noticed, I just noticed that it was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So Moon is at twelve degrees Sag. Okay. So it was just passed over um, semi sextile. That's thirty degrees. The Venus. Um, and it's making a um, uh, sextile to his sun, which brings it into all those other planets. It's bringing it into the, the conjunction of Sun, Saturn, Neptune, Mercury. It brings them all together. That's something you want to learn in astrology. If one planet is conjunct four others, as in three others, as in this case, the Sun is conjunct what Saturn, your Neptune, and Mercury. And if it gets triggered by a, an aspect, that means that whole conjunction is triggered. So that progressed moon right here at 12 degrees Sag is making a favorable sextile aspect to all these planets, which he would pay attention to if he was doing using these tools. So we have very positive energy aspect there. And if you look at 12 degrees, it's also quincunc. Um, pretty much Jupiter. It's moving up to that, but it's quite still out of orbit a little bit. But the whole point of this is, is when you look at you look at the um, progressed moon, you see what it's doing. Then you look at transit Saturn. If there are three witnesses, the one witness we haven't played with yet <clears throat> is is um, the new moon. The new moon's at four degrees Virgo. This is a conjunction of the moon and sun, and it's at four, four degrees Virgo. If you look at the chart, it's clicking the moon by square, okay, which is at, what, two, two degrees of Gemini. When he started this war, it would have been much more accurately moving into that square to the moon emotional conflicts. Also, um, we want to look at the semi-squares. And the semi-squares are not easy to find unless you're no experience with this. So if there's 20, 30 degrees in the sign, this means from in Virgo that there's 26 degrees left. Then you go to the next sign, which is Libra. Is, and I said there was 20, what did I say, 20 what? Six. 26 degrees. And if you go over here, you've got 36, 26, 36, and seven. You got a semi-square between the progress, I mean, the, the new moon, this new moon here, and uh, his Saturn which is triggering all of these again. See, if one is all, if they're all combined and you hit one of them, you're triggering all of them. Okay, that's something you want to learn in astrology. So normally you would say, oh, it's 45 degrees between this planet and Saturn, but it's only, it's too far out of orb for, let's say, Mercury. That's not true because they're all together. They're all speaking the same voice. So at this point, he's got two major afflictions. 
He's got he's got um, Saturn opposing Pluto. That means his destructive energies are going to be stymied and 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 brought to some halt. And you see that happening in the Ukraine Ukraine today. Ukraine is almost taking over Crimea. If you're following this stuff, you may not be. But um, so Pluto is getting a heavy opposition uh, from Saturn right now. That will obstruct his power plays and his decisions to destroy are going to be thwarted. And that's probably why he's going through so much problems right now in, in, in Ukraine. So I mean, we're not going to keep doing this all day. I'm not going to stay on it. But I want you to start to learn how to use these tools. And, um, you know, right now, as we uh, as we uh, progress along, I just want to stay. I stayed a lot with the basics today. Um, I want you to think about the areas where you are weak and maybe add a little bit of a challenge and study that area a little bit more. Um, there was a couple of things I wanted to say there. Okay. Um, um, okay. By the way, yeah, uh, my wife said go over with Jared the rising sign and ascendant. They're the same thing, Jared. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So if somebody says I have Jupiter, I mean, I have Sagittarius rising, or I have Jeff, I have Sagittarius on my ascendant, that's all they're saying the same thing. Okay. Okay. Um, so. We're gonna, you know, we did the we did the keywords of the signs. Do you think you could do those some twelve signs yourself, Jerry? Yeah, I can. I can definitely figure those out. Okay, you want to tell me what they are? If I said what's Aries? Yeah, I know that's I am. We haven't we didn't go over them all today. We over went, went over a part of them, so I'll have to study the rest of them that okay, we didn't good. go over. I'll go through. Them. Okay, Aries is I am. Taurus is I have. Gemini's I think. Cancer is I feel, Leo is I will. Remember what's the, what makes you strong is your willpower. That's why yes. Leo is called the lion. That's why Leo is uh, one of the strongest uh, signs. It's uh, of terms of strength. The will is very strong in those people. Okay, I I serve as um, Virgo. Um, I desire. I mean, I I balance or I harmonize as. Uh, is uh, Libra. Libras are interesting people. You know, you ask them, you want to go to a restaurant today? Yeah, where, where would you like to? We want to go to, um, want to go to Lobster, uh, whatever. No, no, you pick it. You pick the you pick the place we go. Uh, Libras want to harmonize. They want to get along. So they generally don't like to make decisions. They want somebody else to make the decision for them. So Libra I'm talking about. Did I say Leo? Libra. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, Libra is... Um, um, a sign of conciliation, always wanting to conciliate. That's the positive side of it anyway. Um, so Scorpio's I desire um, and Sagittarius is I see. I notice people use those words a lot when they're, they use their keywords a lot and they're, when they're uh, born of a sign. I'm a Sagittarius, I usually say, I say it a lot. I see, I see this, I see that. Um, Elena's more Taurus, I have, you know, um, so we have these keywords for a reason, They kind of in our spirit, okay, so Sagittarius says, I see Capricorn as I use, okay, and um, you can find Capricorns very often are very utilitarian, okay, if you're useful to them, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll have a relationship with you. But if you're wasting their time, remember Father Time, Saturn, they don't have time for all that, okay? And Capricorns can be very impatient. Okay, again, this is the negative side. There's a positive side too. They can be very punctual, okay? So it's not always bad. Okay, uh, Capricorn Aquarius is I know, and Pisces is I believe. So it tells you a lot about that sign and those signs. Okay, we've gone for what a couple hours here. Yes. Um, I know it's got a little lengthy and it's a little hard when we get into the basics. It gets a little tedious sometimes, but we need to keep back, you know, on those themes and the things that we're 
we're learning. We have to go back to essentials sometime. So I'm going to let you guys go. If you want to get back online with each other, uh, I think it's a good idea. And, uh, you know, um, Elena has something for me. Please remind the viewers, you're listening to Ron Watson, astrology. <laughs> she said, you weren't supposed to read that, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, she has a hard time with it. So it's crazy. <laughs> uh, anyway, so... She's saying to the viewers, basically, because we post this on YouTube, that uh, we'd love for you to um, subscribe, and we hope you've enjoyed the show. It's Ron Watson Astrology, and uh, we basically are posting the classes as we go through them, and uh, we hope you enjoy them. And to all you students there, I thank you so much for being there, and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, thank you for having us. It's a beautiful show. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, as always. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Stay beautiful, all you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.